Everybody, welcome. It's so good to have you live with us. And uh, I've got a very short message that I want to share with you this morning. I was busy praying this morning. This is the word that came to me for you. For the body of Christ as a whole. For the true church. <clears throat> for the true church. That's very important to know. Read out of Isaiah chapter number 9. And chapter number 9 is a very powerful prophetic word. It's a prophetic word for you. In particular, if you have found yourself recently or presently or have been going through a very horrific spiritual battle, this word is for you. Right here, right now, for this time. So let's have a look at it. I want to read out of Isaiah chapter number 9. And I'm going to read from verse number 2. Isaiah chapter number 9, verse number 2. The people who walk in darkness shall see a great light. The people who walk in darkness shall see a great light. This word light here in the Hebrew language is speaking of the darkness is Choshek. It speaks of a miserable, unsaved condition, an unregenerate condition. In other words, when he talks about a people who walk in darkness, he's not talking about a Christian walking in there. He's talking about a person who has a person who is unsaved, not born again from above. So he's talking about those of us who once walked in darkness. He's looking into the future. This is a mess messianic prophet, Isaiah. And he's looking into the future and he sees something. A people who walked in darkness, a people who walked in Choshek, a people who walked in a realm of blindness of pain of of suffering this darkness is very very symbolic of a light that is absolutely null and void and the people are blind they cannot see it's talking about you and i once upon a time the people who once walk in darkness he sees them have seen a great light now he's talking about you and he's talking about me a people have seen a great light that great light that he's talking about there is the light, if you will, of the Christ. It is the light of salvation. It is the light that pierces the darkness of the night and drives out the Choshek, that drives out the pain, that drives out the sorrow, that drives the shame, that drives out the darkness that you and I once walked in, never again to walk in darkness or to be condemned to eternal darkness, if you will. So we've got to understand the people he's talking about here that Isaiah sees into the future. Looking into the future, he sees you and I, who once walked in this darkness, in this Hebrew word, Choshek. It's a very powerful word. It's talking about an absolute darkness, devoid of any light, causing one to become blind, frightful, fearful, full of pain, shame, misery, no hope, hopeless, despair. It's utter darkness, he says. Concerning you and I have seen a great light. That is the light of Christ, the light of salvation. And when you and I saw that light, that light pierced the darkness of our nights. And we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. These are the people he's talking about. It says, a light that will shine on all those. Now the word light in the Hebrew is a different word and has a different meaning to the light of salvation the light of deliverance the light that pierced the darkness that you and i once walked in this light here is a light for those who have got saved those who have been delivered from the darkness from the choshek from eternal damnation those that have been saved he says upon them a light has shone another translation says a light that will shine on all those who live in the land of the shadow of death. Once you have accepted Jesus Christ, the light, you've got to understand that you can never walk in darkness. The fact that there is the shadow of death, the shadow of death tells me there's light that is present. But he says, those that have seen this light, they now have a light shining on them, shining on them. This word light here is talking about revelation more 
the revelation, illumination. And the time in which you and I find ourselves living in right now is there's coming a time of incredible illumination. You must understand that when we receive the light of salvation coming out of the darkness, that light of salvation gave us access to hidden truth previously hidden from us, but always there that you and I began to discover revelation, apocalypto. For example, Peter, when he was walking with Jesus and the disciples, and Jesus said these words, who do men say that I am? The disciples began to chatter. Some say, some say this, some say that. Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say a rabbi, a great teacher, some say. But Jesus never wants, the light never wants to know who you and what you have to say about him based on what some say. He wants to know what you have to say about him on the basis not of what some say, but on the revelation of the apoc or the revealed truth that comes from above, not from the earth, not sensual, carnal, not demonic, but true revelation, apocalypse that comes from. And he says, But who do you say that I am? Some say this, some say that. And then it goes quiet. Jesus is not happy. But Simon Peter pipes up and says, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus gets excited. He says, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say unto you, You are Peter. And upon this rock, the rock of revelation, that I am the Christ, the Christ, the gates of hell shall not prevail. And I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever things you shall bind on this earth shall be bound. And whatsoever things you shall loose on this earth shall be loosed in heaven. What a powerful revelation, wouldn't you say? A great revelation. And yet the danger of those who having once walked in darkness, seeing a great light, the light of salvation, now having access to revelation, Without illumination, there is grave danger. Because we see Simon Peter, who has now just become a part, a fragment of the rock, in his recognition of the great light, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Flesh and blood could not have revealed that to you, as it was so with you. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus continues in the very same breath to say, I've got to go up to Jerusalem. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. And on the third day, I rise again. He is now revealing to Peter and to the disciples the great plan of salvation, the great plan that God has for humanity in its darkened state. And yet Simon Peter, with this great revelation, becomes a satanic expression. You see, many people with revelation outside of illumination, become very often times a Jewish expression at best a satanic expression simon peter tries now to stop this revelation but the lack of illumination the lack of understanding called mouthpiece of satan and this is what i've seen too often too much of people that once walked in dark seeing a great light get saved, delivered from their darkness. But they do not allow the light of revelation and illumination. When Paul the Apostle, he said, I pray that God grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened, illuminated to the hope of his call riches of the glory of his inheritance that is locked up inside of you and I and the exceeding greatness of his resurrection power that is available to those of us who believe that in itself can carry on for months but let me just say this Simon Peter after receiving this great revelation now becomes the mouth of Satan and says not so Lord can you imagine that a man like Simon Peter walks with the Christ recognizes the Christ gets revelation about the keys of the kingdom and what he allows what he allows on the earth 
and what he disallowed, he disallowed on the earth, and so forth and so on, and yet becomes yet the mouthpiece of sin. Let me tell you something right now. This is going to an end. It has to come to an end. It is coming to an end. And so it is right now. That those of you within the sound of my voice, there shall be an impartation, even yes, of illumination. Because without illumination, without understanding, we can become and have become, many of us, foolish expressions. And at worst, the voice of Satan. The mouthpiece of the devil. Why did I say that? Because here is Simon Peter trying to stop the very plan of God for the salvation of mankind, of humanity. Can you imagine? And Jesus rebukes him and says, get behind me, Satan. For you, son, are not mindful of the things of God, but mindful of the things of men. Now, through that season, and so Isaiah continues to see and he looks into the future, a light that will shine all those who live in the land of the shadow of death, speaking about a revelation and more than that, illumination. So that light there is not the light of salvation as in the previous verse. Then he says, for Israel will again be great, filled with joy like that of reapers when the harvest time has come. Now you've got to understand that he's not only speaking to natural Israel. He's speaking to those of us who have seen a great light, have come out of darkness, have received the light of revelation and illumination in the shadow of death, despite that all around us, the shadow of death is prevalent. I want you to understand something right now. He talks about a future people that becomes so filled with joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory and let me tell you something the joy of the lord has departed from many but that joy is coming back for the joy lord is your strength when satan steals our joy we lose our strength my friend and far too many of us during the season out that light shining upon us for illumination i want you to know it's a difficult tough hard thing for many of you with the sound of my voice. If you've tuned in and you're listening to me right now, I want you to know something. If you have been experiencing major spiritual battle, you've got to understand something. It doesn't last forever. Everything has a time. There's a time and a season for everything. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's time for joy. There's time for sorrow. There's time for war. There's time for peace. The key is to know the time. That's why I don't wear a watch as a prophet. A person that has two watches never knows the time. But you see, my friend, what is happening right now is God is moving you, if you give up, a little bit closer to the promises of God. And as your spirit man begins to cause your outward man to get in the step with the things of the spirit, and you get in, then, my friend, you'll be able to say, like Paul the Apostle, who went through hell on earth, if I can pray. He said, for our light affliction is but for a moment. Whatever you go right now, it's going to come to an end. Whatever pain, whatever suffering, and I am not being insensitive to your pain, my friend. I am not being insensitive to your loss. I am not being insensitive to your sorrow. I, I've been through some stuff, but I can tell you something right now. There is a God in heaven, the God of all, my friend. Who though and although you might not feel light, is walking right by your side. And let me tell you something. This is not cliche. There is one who is in city far greater than he who is in the world, who is the prince of us, and that is the Christ in us of glory. Greater is he who is in you and me than he who is in the world. I need you to understand. Very very, very clearly that whatever you're going through, no, you know, Paul said, I am hard pressed, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Christ might be made manifest through this mortal body. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 
But at the end of that verse, after he's described the hardships he's been through, he makes it very, very clear that there is a treasure that is locked up inside of you, a deposit that gives you and I the ability to go beyond. Malo is the Greek word, to go beyond anything in May throw us. And he ends off his conclusion and all of that is this. And he says, our light affliction, the end of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, our light affliction. Can you imagine Paul the Apostle calling everything, making out that everything he's been through is light? Light? You must be kidding me. Our light is but for a moment. In other words, Satan only has a season within which to bring you down. He doesn't have forever. Then he leaves you for a more opportune time. So I want to say, whatever you're going through right now, whatever spiritual conflict and spiritual battle you've been through, know this. In comparison to what's coming, it is a light affliction. Not when you're going through it, it doesn't feel like it. I can assure you when Joseph began, he didn't feel like it was great. He didn't feel like it was light. Oh, my friend, he went through some stuff. But the fact of the matter is this. Paul says, he's got some revelation. He's got some illumination. The man has been stoned to death and raised back to life. He suffered three bitten by a serpent. I mean, what are the odds that you and I are going to have three plane crashes in an international trip? This guy has been thrown into the pit. This guy has been beaten with rods. He's been, he's been ripped to shreds by the cat of, I think it's 39 tails, 49 tails, whatever. My goodness. This guy been through some stuff. Our light affliction, he says, is but for a moment and is working for us. In the light of eternity, it is a light affliction. Satan has but a moment within which to bring you and I down. But notice, it does not continue for our light affliction is but for a moment, a season. And then he says, and I love this because it makes Satan the ultimate rank, rank supreme loser in all of creation. That no matter what he throws your way or my way, I want you to know, my friend, it's a light affliction. And it's but for a Why? Because it is working for us, Paul says. A far greater weight of glory. Chapter 5, verse 1 says, For we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are which have eternal value. In other words, if you keep your focus on eternity, on that which has eternal value, my friend, you'll find out that Satan's attack is but for a moment, and God works all things out for the good of those who love him who are the called, and who are walking according to his spirit. Now, let me carry on. I want to finish quickly. Let me just say this. A light that will shine on all those who live in the land of the shadow of death, for Israel will again be great, those who are of faith and also filled with joy, like that of reapers when the harvest time has come. He's talking about a joy that will yet manifest in our lifetime, I can assure you, because of the greatest harvest planet Earth has ever seen. You have been called to that. Down the line, when I do this crusade or conference on the 20th to the 26th, I will share great revelation and illumination with you of what God has shown me in the last five years. But let me just continue quickly. When the harvest time has come, that we fill with joy. And like that, of the dividing of the plunder, they have won. God will break the chains that bind his people and the whip that scourges them, just as he did when he destroyed the vast host of the Midianites. We must understand this. We've got to understand. By Gideon's little band, there's going to be a remnant in that glorious day of peace. Okay, I want to take it out of the New King James because I'll just tell you about the King James Version. Because you've multiplied the nation. Okay, 
Let me just go through. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. That's the light of the I've seen that great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow, upon them a light of sight. There is not a salvation, a light of revelation and illumination. Thou hast multiplied the nation. In other words, the multiplication of those who have seen the light. It's talking about harvest. And you have multiplied the nation and not they joy before according to the joy in the harvest. In other words, they've lost their joy, but the joy is coming back because of a great harvest that you and I are going to take. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Now, here's what I want to say. Verse 5, when I was praying this morning, I want you to get this verse. For every battle of the warrior. Now remember the context. He's talking about those who have seen the light of salvation, the light of revelation and illumination. Those who became joyless, suddenly getting joy because of harvest time, multiplication. He talks about breaking the yoke, the burden. The rod of the depressor, just like it was in the days of Midian when Gideon and his mighty men destroyed the enemy. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and become the fuel for fire. In other words, here's the word of the Lord for you this morning. What he is saying is, in the New Kingdoms version, it says, every sandal, every dusty sandal from the noisy battle and the garments in the spirit, we have garments dipped in blood in the spiritual battle. There has been bloodshed. If you've been in a noisy battle and you have been fighting like a warrior and you are a warrior, he says, I'm going to take those sandals and I'm going to take those robes dipped in blood and I'm going to use it as the fuel for fire, a fuel for burning. In other words, your battle scars, whatever the enemy has done against you, there comes a payback time. And that payback time right here, right now is for you, where he will take those robes that have been dipped in your wounds from that noisy battle and the sandals, the dusty sandals, it's, 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 it's symbolic. It's, it's of the warrior that's been in a spiritual battle. He takes that which the enemy has done against you, where you have, have done and seen battle, and there's been wounds, hurt, rejection, pain, shame, whatever you've been going through. There comes a time where God says, give me those garments. Give me that which you had on in the spirit when you went into battle. Because that is what I'm going to use as the very fuel for fire. You see, my friend, what is so powerful about this, that in that culture, in that time, the readers fully comprehended and understood what Isaiah was saying. And that is this. To signal the victory after a battle, a battle you've been through, God takes, or the warriors would take the robes of every soldier and the sandals of every soldier, and they would pile up high. and they. Would used as the fuel to light a fire and the flames and the smoke would billow up into the air and for miles and miles around kilometers the people would see that and that would be the signal the sign that the victory has been won that the victory has come and the wounds and the very pain god has taken in every tear in his bottle in that noisy battle he uses that as the fuel for the fire to signal to the enemy, we have the victory. They have won. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the captain of the hosts. He is on your side. And I want you to know that this is a prophetic word for you. Whatever you've been going through, it's coming to an end. And now you can give your robes and your sandals from the noisy battle. And it's that that God will use to ignite the fire that consumes the enemy that goes into the sky into the atmosphere that Satan will that you have got the victory and the joy 
of the Lord will come back and fully out, even right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, for everybody within the sound of my voice, take the robes that have been dipped in their blood, take the sandals from the noisy battle, and sit for the burning, for the fuel for fire, as the signal of the victory that they have won. It has come to an end. The time has come to an end. Their season of conflict has come to an end. And now, Father, let it work for us, not only for the victory, but also a greater weight of glory, a greater weight of your doxa, a weight of your character, of your nature, the essence of who you are as the Christ in us begins to manifest and a harvest begins to be taken in the appointed time for your glory. But I pray right now for victory for everyone and that the fuel is used for fire be a consuming fire, be a signal and a sign that the victory is there. In the name of Jesus the Christ, heal them from their broken hearts, heal them from their wounds from the battle, heal them and let them put on once again the shoes of the gospel of peace that are weapons of war against the enemy. And let the God of peace shortly crush Satan underneath their feet to the glory of Jesus Christ. I pray healing. I pray peace. I pray victory to every wounded right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare and decree you have the victory. So Satan, by the power of this word, his word, I take authority over your works in their lives. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind your works. I break the power and the works of darkness. And I set your people free, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. And I, I release them into the joy of the Lord, for the victory is ours in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's precious people, amen. Well, bless you guys. That I guess if I pray tomorrow, God gives me another word for you, I'll get into it. Bless you guys. Amazing day. Love you.